So our very first guest on Get Real with Le- Leia is Libby. Libby. So maybe let's start with, um, I'll start by asking questions. So you're, you're married around 14 years, and do you have children? Four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, she has four. <laughs> what happened to those three kids? Okay, yeah. okay. So she has four kids. Okay, fine. Um, so why don't you start with issue number one? What What would you like to, uh, what are some obstacles to the happiness in your life and the marriage in your life? And let's, let's uh, go through. There's one issue in particular that really comes up a lot in my marriage, and I feel like it really derails about this topic. It really derails me from being able to be calm and happy and and have the kind of home that I want. And that issue really, we started to talk about it a little bit, but that issue really is like, who does what in the home? So I'll give you like an example. So So who um, does what in the home for the listeners? Okay, say that again. You what? Yeah. Am I, should I go slower? Am I speaking slower? A little bit slower, but also sometimes I'll clarify. If I don't hear you, then for sure the, the, our listeners can't hear you. So sometimes I'll repeat what you say just to make sure they heard it. So you said that who does what in the home has okay. been like a bugaboo in your marriage thus far, derailing you from happiness. Yes. Okay, good. I'm with you. Yes, it is. So as an example, really this comes up a lot on Shabbos because we, um, you know, there's a lot of action that happens in my house on Shabbos. It's like a house that the kids in the neighborhood all end up at. And my husband likes to have guests and I like that too. So we have, we have, we try to host almost every Shabbos, but it really, it makes, you know, a a big mess and there's a lot of, you know, dishes that need to be washed and whatever it is. And I can't get out of my own head. I don't need things to be equal. Um, but the way that I, the way that I grew up in my home, at least growing up was when there's something to be done in the home, everybody chips in. Um, so, you know, if my father was at work, obviously that, you know, or my mother was at work then that didn't happen. But if everybody was at home on Shabbos and the table needed to be cleared, for example, like everybody would chip in and help. And that's not at all how my husband grew up. My it's husband not what? grew up, his mother did oh, everything. Oh, that's not how. Okay, that's not how your husband grew up. That's okay, not fine. how my husband grew up. Okay. Right? And I feel like we've, you know... He grew it's up. Just, it's been an issue that's come up over and over. And so, you know, even this past she, Shabbos, I'll tell me? you what happened this past... Mostly Shabbos. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, no, I just want to know what... Ha- you say that's not how your husband grew up. How did he grow up? His mother did everything? His mother did everything. Okay, fine. Yes. Okay, so okay, so you're saying Everything, incident? Um, you know, even even for the adult, even for her adult children, she would like when I met him, she was still, you know, doing everything for him, his laundry, his everything. Um, so, do you have her phone yeah, number? So I'm, I'm going to have her do my laundry. That's good. I, can can I have her phone number anyway? Okay, <laughs> so go ahead. Would. Yeah. She okay. Would. So okay. All <laughs> she right. Would. So so what happened? Um, she would. That's good. So, hmm. Okay, so you're saying um, what happened this past Shabbos? So, like, okay, so even this past Shabbos, so the house was a mess and fine, and then everybody left, and it was time to get it cleaned up, and, you know, I can't really wait. I don't have a housekeeper until Tuesday, so I can't, I'm not going to leave things array until Tuesday, because then, you know, then we can't cook on Sunday and cook on Monday and whatever it is. But anyways, so I'm starting to wash the dishes, and the truth is, to give him credit, my husband was really helping Mose Shabbos. He was cleaning up. But there's two pieces that, that came up for me. So one piece is, and I know this is immature on my part, but I'm just going to say it. One piece is, like, I get upset in my head because he's, I know he's not doing it because he wants to, because he feels a responsibility towards the home. He's doing it so that I don't get mad at him, which is nice, I guess. But that's, I don't feel like that's, like, you know, the healthiest thing. And it, it makes me upset. Like, why doesn't he care about me? Why doesn't he want to do it for me and for our home? That's the feeling. And then the other feeling was I was washing the dishes, and it was really hurting my back. To and there were a lot of dishes. And in my head, I just started to get so resentful. Like, if he cares about me, if he cares that I'm in pain, this is physically hurting me, then he would take over and he would wash the dishes. 
And if I ask him, he might do it, but he really hates doing dishes. And he's even like in the past said, I don't do dishes. So it would have been a whole big thing probably. Mm -hmm. But then I also, the last layer on here is that then that same Shabbos we had eaten out at someone's house, a friend of mine, and she had gotten her nails done. So she had like her, a nice manicure and she made a comment to her husband, like, I need you to wash the dishes today so that I don't ruin my manicure. And he was like, no problem. And he was washing the dishes after. So then that most they saw this, I'm standing there washing dishes and I'm in like physical pain. It hurts me. And I'm telling in my head, what I'm thinking is like, this is where my mind goes. And I know it's, you know, a little bit not healthy, but my mind starts to go to my husband, my friend's husband, he'll wash the, the dishes so she doesn't ruin her manicure. But my husband won't eat dishes for me because I'm in physical pain. Like, and then I start to spiral. Like, he doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't see what my needs are. And then I, I didn't say anything about it. Like, I just left it. But I'm so worked up in my head and so upset about all of it. And then it, it just ruins, like, our ability to be close for the next little while until I can get past it on my own. Fabulously explained very insightful, very owned up to some of the things that you're doing that uh, may not be ideal in terms of, you know, uh, so a color code, very, very outstanding. I appreciate your sharing all that with us. And the good news is there's a lot that can be fixed here. There's a lot, uh, there's a lot of, you know, logistic things that can be fixed. And there's a lot of uh, things in your own mind, in your own heart that can help heal the anger that you feel or the resentment that you feel. So let me just start with this. Um, so your, um, what do you mean physical pain? Like just from doing the dishes or your back was already hurting or uh, I'm not sure. I just want to understand that. Well, I have, I have a back, I have back issues. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it, it's tolerable. I can do it. I was able to get through the dishes, but it really does hurt mm -hmm. physically. Yes. So can I ask you another question? Is there a reason you aren't using paper plates? Well, we do. But there were still it was the bowls and you know the serving pieces, the things we can't use paper for. But we do use paper. Uh huh. But you're saying there was that many dishes aside from just the dishes that people use and the and the forks and knives, etc. You use plastic forks and yeah. knives. Yeah, and then it was you know the kids took. Yeah, the kids took the plastic forks and knives. So there were bowls. There were, um, you know, I don't know, serving trays. It was the kids, you know, took cups and bowls and stuff like it was stuff the kids had used mm -hmm. so uh all in all tell me what the guess a number how many dishes were there we're starting with the logistics of the issue that's always a good place to start because then when you start to see that there might be some logistics solutions to things then you can deal with the emotional things in a much easier way. So we're starting just with logistics for this for this particular issue. But just how many okay. dishes? Count but I want to also clarify. Well, I'll tell you that. But I also want to clarify. I think I was just giving the dishes as an example, but it really I could give you forty more examples, whether it's laundry okay. or lunches for the kids that need to be made, or getting up in the morning, and you know, if I can give you one more quick example of something that came up this week that made me have the same exact feeling. Can okay. I give you one more quick example? Is that yes, okay? but hold on. Let me just make sure everybody heard those is that she said, you know, getting up in the morning, getting the kids ready in the morning, um, doing the laundry, making lunches, all these duties that she is doing that she feels resentful for. And now she's about to give us one more example besides the dishes. She's saying if we even if we solve the logistics of the dishes, there, it's like uh, permeates every part of their relationship. So, OK, so go ahead. What's the other example? Exactly. So it's it's in the mornings. It's become it's we, it's my responsibility to get the kids up and out. And if my husband's awake, and he works, I, I he's not. not he's, oh. you know, he works during late hours, but a lot of times to get going. And so, <clears throat> if he's awake, he'll help with you know the mad rush in the morning of getting everybody out and ready. But <clears throat> most of the time, or much of the time. He's not awake, and so it's on me to, you know, rush around like a crazy person and get all the kids awake and in uniforms and ready for the different carpools. And so 
one day, and I, I get, I do, I get resentful about it. And so, you know, one day this week, actually, yesterday, and this is not a mature thing, but I'm going to tell you, but yesterday I was like, I just, I was just upset. And I said, I'm not going to do it. I said it to myself, I'm not going to do it this morning. And so I like stayed in bed extra. I took my time and then the kids were all late. And then he was upset because the morning was just super rushed and hectic. But so I know that wasn't a mature thing on my part, but my point is that I get resentful about the fact that I'm the one going to working so hard in the mornings while he will chip in a little bit if he can, if he's awake and around and has the energy. I hear. I hear. Um, can I ask you a question? Who, uh, what are the working hours? Uh, is are either of you full time? Both of you full time? Neither of you work? What, what's what's the story there? I hope somebody works. <laughs> so I am part time. I am part time, um, and he is full time but self employed. So sometimes that's you know eighty hours a week. Eighty hours a week just depending on what's going on. I missed it. So you said it's 80 hours a week, or what's the other amount of hours a week? Or 20. It, it, it really varies depending on what's going on. So it, it could be 20 be or 80. It can be 85. It can be 20. Okay. And what is your, um, how many hours a week are you working in your part-time position? Um, I am basically 10. 10. Okay, 10 hours a week. Is that five hours twice a week or two hours here, two hours there? Just so I have a picture. No, it's, it's spread out, yeah. It's spread out. It's spread out. A few hours here, a few hours there. Do you have time? Mm -hmm. Do you know when those hours are going to be? Are they set or you can you set them or, or are they set for you? No. Um, I could set them, but right now they're not there. They change usually week to week. Week to week, who has the power over what hours you work? You or something else, somebody else? Me and the people I work with. Uh huh. Okay. But mostly me. I could set that. You could set that. Okay. So I'm I'm unclear. So he works full time, sometimes twenty, sometimes eighty hours a week, but probably on average. 50? Yeah. Something like that? You know, you own your own business. Your Parnassa d depends on how much, many hours you work. So I assume, you know, um, yeah, I mean, usually when someone owns their own business, it's 50, 60, 70, you know, hours. Okay. So your question is that when he's home, he should... Do you? I'm not sure I'm following this. I mean, if you both work full time, I could understand his, you know, that yeah, he come on, you know, get with the program. I'm just not quite sure I'm following where you're coming from. If you know, if if that was your choice, you know, uh, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, like. Wait, I mean, are, do I you, do, I do. But, I mean, do you, you guys know, have a division of labor? Like, you know, like whose job, if if he's working, let's say, let's just call it 50 hours a week. If he's working, you know, that's way more than full-time. Full-time is 40 hours a week, but it's, it's 50 or 60 hours a week. So he's working m more than full-time. So you're saying he should come home from his work and he should be doing just every bit as much as you do? I, is no. that your expectation? No. No, I don't. No, I. Don't I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just trying to understand. I don't want him. I'm trying to no, understand where you're coming from. I get from. it. That's, yeah. No, I don't expect him when he comes home to be doing stuff. But you know, there's time. There's times like, for example, on the weekend when we're both home, right? Then it, I don't know. To me, it feels like if he, a man, he cares about our home. Then when there's things that need to get done, we all pitch in and work together um or you know I don't have a baby at home right now but when I did have a baby at home and I was home full time with that baby like that was my job that was 90 hours a week right or more whatever right so he was working full time and I was working full time with the baby that I had home and so then I'm, I'm not I don't think that things need to be equal like if I 
make a lunch that you need to make the lunch. And to be honest, I don't, he's never made a lunch and he's never made a dinner and that's okay. I don't need any of that. He doesn't want to do that or feel good at that. Fine. But I just feel like to me, it feels like there's like an attitude of like, what would make me feel loved is, you know, there's things that need to get done and we all are a team and we all work together to get what needs to get done and everybody can do what they're good at. Um, but I don't know, maybe I have a completely wrong perspective. You can tell me. So, I, I mean, our, our Masora gives over, you know, certain aspects of roles, but it doesn't say job duties or whatever. And it's very upside down in these day and age because a lot of women do work full time and the husband works full time. And then the wife still does as much as of the lion's share of work. And, you know, so, you know, it's 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 not this is not a simple thing. And I actually don't even, you know, I, I don't even um, want to make people feel bad or guilty for how they operate in their homes. But by the same token, there are some expectations that we carry around with us that make us miserable when the expectations are not really realistic or kind of, quote unquote, fair, I hate that word, but, but I'm just saying, in other words, if he's working if you, you know, if you were both working full time or whatever, and you had the weekdays and the nights and the school lunches and the whatever, you know, and I, I could hear it. I could hear the frustration. I could hear the sadness. I could hear the resentment of him. I, I get that. With you not working full time, I, I really think that your expectations should be that's your you know, that's your job is this physical labor of doing that stuff. And he has his job and the way he shows love to the families by go earning the living or whatever other ways he has, it may not match exactly what you need acts of service or whatever, you know, I've gotten familiar with these things, but the, the, I think, you know, it definitely takes a readjustment to think about the fact that if you are working 10 hours a week and again it's more on a flexible side or whatever and he has a lot of stresses running your own business a lot of stress coming there I don't know that that he isn't participating on the weekend is necessarily um I think that might be a mistaken expectation on your part by the same token I think there's you're, you've got a double disadvantage. One is you have very high expectation, and number two, he had a mom who did everything for him, so he's not even on the map. You know, if he was ten percent better or twenty percent better, you probably would sort of say, okay, you know, um, that's fine. But I think for you to understand, for you to help and figure out what you can cope with you got to ratchet down in a big way your expectations and ratchet down your workload. So I don't care if you guys like having a lot of guests and you like having a house full of kids. It is not worth. That's, your, that's what you're paying for your shalom bias. You're saying, okay, mm -hmm. let's weigh this. Okay. What's more important to me, shalom bias or having guests and lots of kids in the house and being that house on the block that everybody loves to come to. Oh, that's more important to us. Let's throw Shalom Bias in the trash. Your priorities, if you were to understand that when, you know, when your husband says, hey, you know, why don't we have the Jones and the Smiths for lunch this week? You know, that's an extra 20 people. Oh, it'll be really fun. We'll have a great time. Your head needs to immediately go, oh my gosh, that's, you know, 72 dishes. I my back has been hurting this week. I've lifted a lot of back boxes. I'm not doing it and I'm not putting him in the situation where he's got to stand there at the sink and do dishes while I stand in the sink do dishes whatever. That's a miserable place for us to go. I'm sorry, dear, you know, or you have a conversation with him beforehand and communicate this to him and you say, "Listen, I love you more than I love the guests. I love you more than I love the neighborhood kids." Mm -hmm. And that's just the end of the story. Another thing you could do, you could take your, you take a, a bowl that you're going to put the salad in and you line it in aluminum foil, okay? You serve the salad in aluminum foil and then it comes back to the kitchen and you take the aluminum foil, the yucky aluminum foil out and you throw it away, okay? 
is that lovely for your guests? Are you going to be showing off to your neighbors how you're so, you know, Martha Stewart or whatever, <laughs> you know, or Ray, what's that lady, Rachel Ray, whatever, all these popular, you know. No, okay, so this, that's not the, the ideal way to entertain. But if Shalom Bias is the number one priority in your life, all of these solutions will come to you. Not will come to you. You don't have to brainstorm, talk to friends. How do you do this? How do you entertain so much word? You, you, your housekeeper comes on Tuesday. Get your housekeeper there on Monday. Skip Tuesdays. Tuesdays, you know, whatever needs to be done Aluminum in those foil. days. Okay. You serve. What'd you say? I missed what you said. Foil, and then it comes back. I'm sorry, you're not coming through. You take the aluminum foil, yucky aluminum foil. Oh, no, I didn't Something say Something about anything. taking the aluminum foil. We're working on it. Okay, no, keep I'm talking. Listening. Oh, I can hear you totally now. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. You are saying about, you said one point. No, I didn't, I didn't say anything at all. I'm listening. Oh, okay. All right. Somehow a voice came. Oh, somebody else? Oh, fine. Okay. And it also, by the way, if you're listening here, please you make a comment below. Make a question below. We are here to answer. We're answering it for Libby, but we're also trying to make this so that we all can grow from this. And if there's something that I've said that you're like, wait a minute, Leah, blah, 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 blah. Or there's something Libby said or you have a point for Libby or something, we want you to share. We want you to be able to, to interact with us also. So keep that in mind. So the point is that you got to way, 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 way ratchet down the workload you have. And I don't, you know, if that means that you spend Sunday making all, you make peanut butter and jelly. By the way, peanut butter and jelly does freeze, contrary to what your children will say. It does freeze. You can stick them all in the freezer and then boom, 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 boom. Maybe they don't like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, mayonnaise and, and um, uh, um, a cheese dips. People still eat mayonnaise. Yeah, oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly you can't even do anymore because they don't let peanuts in the school. So that's oh. a gone Okay, so gone almond, lunch. almond yeah. and jelly. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> almond butter. Fine. <laughs> Um, but, but whatever it is, I'm just saying you have to, if, look, we know from, 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 uh, Hashem many times in the Torah that <coughs> Shalom is so important. It's, in, it, it's, it's more important than everything in creation. It's more important than this microphone, than this cup, than me, than, well, I don't know about people. I don't know, whatever. Uh, <coughs> but I'm just saying it, it is the most important thing to, to God is peace. So if you take that peace with my husband is the number one top thing in my life and everything else is not even second not even fifth not even a thousandth in terms of importance if you make shalom bias your most important thing your most important priority every other hope you have or ha the kind of home you want to have goes out the window because having a beautiful home where you're that family that neighborhood family where everyone comes to is so secondary so the thousandary to shalom in the home so you've got to ratchet down your duties make figure out ways to make lunches easier for you figure out ways to get the laundry done better you know whether that's you know helping getting one of your teenage kids to say, look, five bucks a week for you to twice a week. I'm gonna. There's gonna be a basket in front of your door. You take that basket and you put the clothes on everyone's room, and you will get five dollars for it. Do stuff that is going to ratchet down your workload, so it doesn't go. It doesn't come between you and your husband. You have, as again, I was said before, you've got two handicaps. One is your expectations are too high uh, for somebody who's not working, and secondly, your you've got a husband who isn't a pitch inner. Uh, is that a word? Yeah. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't know he doesn't know how to pitch in. He was never taught how to pitch in. He resents pitching in. He feels like I work full time. Like, are you crazy? I'm doing dishes. Here I am. Who knows what he was thinking there? You're oh. sitting there doing dishes. He could be sitting there saying, I can't believe that this is what I landed up with. I, I really thought when I got married, my wife would do all this. That's a wacky expectation on his part provided for by his mom. Okay, so don't be mad at your mother-in-law. She probably thought she was doing the right thing. She thought she was, that's what a good mom is. I mean, maybe look at his grandmother and see what kind of home she was raised in that she thinks that that's what is the appropriate what, thing to do is to, you know, I, I, I would say if you were to go to a big grove and ask them, you know, should a mom do everything for the kids? They're like, no, the kid will never grow up being able to chip in. And then when he gets married, he's going to have issues. Hello? Welcome home, you know. So he needs an education, not by you. And the way he can get that education is by, first, you're just 
taking this, you know, we're going to do a little adjustment in here in a second, you know, is taking those, make, making a few adjustments. And then it could be after a month of you being, look, if you're sitting there, steam is coming out of your ear and you're working with him and he's doing it out of, because he doesn't want you to be mad at him and your steam is coming out your ear. And for the next 24, 48 hours, you're not bringing him close. He knows Okay, he knows this is not working. Okay, he feels bad about it, and he's probably standing there feeling resentful and upset that this is what he has to do. If your anger at him is ratcheted down, and your priorities and expectations are down, and you number one, your priorities are up, your expectations are down, and number two, four, whatever we are on, you stop putting so much pressure on yourself to do so many things. If you do all that, the tension is going to go down, and then in about a month, he can hear you say something like, you know, I really want to be close to you. I realize this whole helping around the house is an issue. You know, your mom did everything, and I realize, you know, I don't know that whether that was good, whether that was bad, but, you know, the f- truth of the matter is that I really want to have a, um, I want to I wanna do more, but I also, if, if I do, if I stop resenting you for not doing, if you could chip in maybe just 5 to 10% more, hoping that'll grow, if you chip in 5 to 10% more, that would really help me to stop, you know, to, 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 to ease my burden. Something like that. We can work on the conversation. But do you get where we're going with this so far? Yeah, Definitely. Can I ask um, you a question, Libby? How old are your children? Add a year or subtract a year to all the um, kids. Yeah, 12 and under. You only just tell me the two oldest. Forget and the rest. Help. The 12 and under. Oh, 12 and under. And the 12 year old is yeah, a boy they or. Help. They help a lot. Right. They, is that a boy or a girl, the 12 year old? A girl. Okay, because I was going to say, maybe dishes, like when you're doing dishes, that's, I mean, a 12-year-old is is totally able to take on dishes on, and give you back, back yeah. a break. Yeah, they do help. Yeah. They I, do help, but for me, it, comes, it just comes back to that feeling, which I know is not rational, but that feeling is like, if he loved me, he would, blah, blah, blah. Did he also know that your back was hurting and that the dishes were hurting you while you were doing it, or is that all in your head? Um, the conversations you were having. No, sort- he knew. Oh, he knew. He knew because yeah. I was like, like, oh, this hurts. I was being annoying about it, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get right to the issue of um, the, I, if he, if he loved me, he would do X, Y, Z. That is a. Um, or if he cared. That's if, he it cared. Mm-hmm. if he cared. If he cared. Yeah, so we all have to recognize, and I'm trying to remember the quote, the source for this, but we all have to recognize that the feeling, you know, of if he cared, then X, Y, Z is the quintessential, beautiful, perfect tool of the Yetzer Hara, of the evil inclination. Wherever there's a tiny, tiny crack that could erode closeness between a husband and a wife, believe me, the evil inclination is going to zap right in there. It's masterful at getting in there. And it's very effective. It's very effective when there's almost no emotion that evokes more drama internally than feeling sorry for ourselves. And we all feel sorry for ourselves, and you know we that, that's a that's a God given right, <laughs> okay? So you know I, I think I've said in here before I have a friend where when I'm feeling sorry for myself, I have a friend I call him, call her, and I say I just need a, 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 um, a, a, I need you to say it or whatever, and she'll say, oh, she doesn't even need to know what happened, but she says the following, oh, you poor thing. Oh, you poor thing. And I have, uh, yeah, oh, you poor thing. Because women need that. We really need that. But <clears throat> the person we need it for the most is ourselves. Like you just go into down into that tunnel of feeling like a victim to circumstance, a victim to what your husband's doing, a victim to, you know, the, the, the current situation. And the problem with that is once you go there, 
it's very hard to get out. You you know you can't. It's because that's such a suck. You know what, what's what are those things when it goes down like this? A vortex. You know what what. Spiral. A spiral, a downward spiral. When you go down that downward spiral, you, it's like, you know, try, think about a whirlpool, like, like one of those things in the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle or something is going around and around. You're going down there. You are, it, getting up is 10,000 times harder than getting in. So once you start down that path, if you say to yourself, oh, this is a vortex, this is a spiral, this, I'm not going there, you can actually just not go there. If you recognize it as a, um, a an indulgence, a unhealthy, if you recognize it as the huge cost that it costs you in closeness to your husband, you're like, oh wait, oh this is the self pity, this is the self pity tunnel. I ain't going there. Ha ha ha. Right. You can really nip it in the bud. It takes work. It takes effort. And you still don't always accomplish it. But if you recognize it as such, because here you are, you're standing there doing the dishes. You've probably had a very lovely Shabbos, actually. You've had all the neighbors, which is what you guys wanted. You know, that's kind of your dream is to have all the neighbors over, to have friends over. You know, it kind of fit your pictures. After the fact, the cost of that is that there you are in the kitchen, and instead of savoring the beautiful time you've had together, instead of savoring that he's alive, that you're alive, that you're in the room together, that you love each other, you're sitting there in steam coming out your ears and probably steam coming out of his ears. It's sad. It's something to be sad about. So, again, if you have... If you have in your mind shalom bias is huge and more important than anything, then a lot of the littler decisions about lunches and, you know, dishes and whatever can, you know, you can figure out answers. Without that priority, you're going to, you, you know, everything's a mishka bobble. So can you see a way, let's, let's brainstorm a little bit, a way that you can figure out, number one, I want to hear from you about, how you can decrease your expectations of him. And then number two, we can brainstorm some, that we'll start with that. And then secondly, we'll brainstorm some logistics of how to get less on your plate. But let's start with the emotions first. Yeah. I mean, can I also just quickly ask how would, like, what would you be saying differently if I actually was working full time? Because we've had periods where I did work full time and the issues were, even more amplified. Mm-hmm. So it's a good question. Her question is, if she was working full time, how would I answer differently? Um, then I would say you have even more work to do to logistically get the, you know, things handled in a Seder dick way. Is that a word? Uh, in a uh, efficient way, you know, getting lunches all made on Sundays or getting, or, you know, uh, if that means spending extra and getting the hot lunches, you know, whatever, even though that's annoying because you can just be, give, you know, it's twice as much as if you just make a sandwich or something like that. You know, again, all of the, that's called shalom bias money, by the way. If you spend money on something so that you aren't aggravated at your husband, God will pay for it. That is, we have many, many sources in the tour for that. So, you know, you know, you take that one to the bank. But the, um, uh, you know, in terms of if you worked full time, the, you know, there's more to consider in that. But there's still something about expectations about what you should do, what your husband should do um, that need to be need to be worked out. And I think I think um, that's probably where women go in their mind when they're mad at their husbands. Because especially, let's say, during the week, you get it. You know, he's, he's at work, and he comes home work at the end of the day. So, you know, okay, I'll do a little, I'll do the diapers, I'll do the d dishes, all that, you know, the woman can, can sort of hear that. When it comes to weekend, when he's there anyhow, and he slept in. Like, you didn't sleep in. You were up with the kids. You were doing this, that, and the other, getting the meal ready, whatever. He got a nap on Shabbos afternoon. You didn't. There's a lot of resentment there. But what a person has to understand when a work, but when a person is working, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 hours, 80 hours, as you said, a week, they need that weekend just to decompress if you're not working. If you're working, then I feel, uh, you know, that's, that's a tougher situation. It's hard to have harmony in a home when, when there's way too many tasks to do, way too little time to do them. So that makes it much more challenging and you just have to be 
on your game and r- keep your priorities straight about shalom bias and f- do a lot of things in advance. Freeze food, right? Okay, I have, I have uh, students who are like, I, I never freeze anything. My husband doesn't like the way it tastes. They don't really tell. Okay, some maybe some people can tell, but it's very rare they can tell. That, but that's what you, you have to say. Listen, I'm either going to freeze food and make, you know, th- four trays of chicken at a time and none of them done for the next, you know, for Shabbos for a month or, or I'm going to be, a frazzled mess when it comes to you know lighting candles you know so you have to you know what my, 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 you need to make things work for you even if you it makes you less of a perfect wife did that answer that question hello she's not there anymore are you there she's not did, nope not at all okay so should i text her what should i do no, we we uh, I think well, this 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 has a, yeah. is it not is our it, our this computer hasn't been working at all today so okay is it is it can you hear us now no 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 because she's pre free teleconference is gone okay all right so fine so okay so I'm just gonna wrap this all up with the conclusions first of all thank you very much Libby she now, I don't know if she can hear me but maybe she listens to it after. Um, thank you for these are fantastic questions and um, a fantastic situation to bring up. I'm sure everybody is dealing with these in one way or another. These issues, the main thing that um, the main take home message here, and I'm just going to answer it rather than brainstorming with her. I'm just going to give them to you. So there's two issues. Number one, to constantly ask yourself, is my life set up for maximal? Shalom bias. Her life is not. Her life is not set. Are they hearing me? Are people hearing me? Am well, I being recorded? I, uh, hopefully Facebook. Yeah. Is, is you're Facebook being recorded. On? Yeah. Facebook. You're being okay, recorded fine. and Facebook, Facebook okay, Live good. is working. Okay. Yeah. Facebook Live. Yeah. So okay, just fine. the teleconference went down. Okay. Just the teleconference went down. Yeah. Okay. That's how life is sometimes. Okay. So number one, make sure your life is that, that number one is that you, you get your priorities. So Shalom bias is number one. Asking yourself, is, is this going to increase my shell and bias or it's going to decrease my shell and bias? Your husband said, oh, let's go away for vacation or whatever. And you're thinking, i got to pack four suitcases. I've got to bring the food. I've got to whatever. Is this going to increase my shell and bias or it's going to decrease my shell and bias? If it's going to decrease your shell and bias, you need to say, you know, we need to rethink this. You know, you need to sit down with the kids. Listen, if we're going away, each of you needs to pack your own suitcases. I'm, I, I'm making stuff up. But I'm saying at the forefront of your mind 24-7, is this going to increase shalom bias or is it going to decrease shalom bias? You got to have that right in the forefront. That'll help answer a lot of the sub questions is having that main focus. That's number one. Number two is you need to figure out logistics in your life that are more workable. This can be done by, you know, getting books on how to clean, you know, better, how to how to run a household better, those kinds of things. Talking to your friends and saying, you know, what do you do? I see you every week. You have 10 people for Shabbos. What are you doing? She's like, oh, those, the Monday before I write my list of groceries and everything's in the house already by Monday, you know, and I start cooking them. And whatever it is, I, whatever the logistics are, you are doing your logistics, you are fixing your logistics so that you can have shalom bias. So you're not standing in the kitchen with aggravation. Okay. So, um, uh, so number one is getting your, is making that your priority. Number two is getting the logistics worked out. Number three, ratchet down the expectations and the feeling sorry for yourself. You know, that, that whole area is again, a deep spiraling downward thing of self pity. I get it. We all do it. It's our God-given right to do it. Is it bring us closer to our husband? I think not. So you need to work on that. Recognize it for what it is. When you start going there, just nip it in the bud. And if you have difficulty nipping it in the bud, send me an email, and I'll you know we can we can maybe cover that in, in, in more. But I've I've told women to just stop, just like freeze yourself, and and it is doable. Um, it might be hard, but it is doable. With the other things working together in conjunction with that as a package, then your the the pain and suffering and resentment that is built up whether you work or whether you don't work. And again, I'm, I, I hope, you know, I haven't offended anybody or made life more difficult because I try not to be political, but I think there is logistics to life. If a woman is a stay-at-home mom and she's working, you know, then there's certain things that she should be doing. 
I think her it would be crazy for her to think it's a 50-50 if he's working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. So um, uh, that's just realistic. And I would say the same thing. This is how you can tell I'm not uh, sexist, is that if the, the wife, if it was the other way around and the husband worked 10 hours a week and the wife worked 60 hours a week, I would tell the husband, you got to wretched that up, guy. You got to, you know, pitch in more. So on weeks that he works 20 hours a week, right, and versus his 80-hour week, he probably should do more during that week. Although if he is working 80-hour weeks and he has two or three in a row, he needs that 20, week, 20 hours the following week to be able to decompress and to get back to himself. And so, this time. Oh, yay. Yes, they're back. she's back. She's yeah. back. Yay. <laughs> okay, could you hear anything I was saying? I can tell. I couldn't hear anything. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I just answer your question. You have to. I'll show you how to. I'll explain to you after we get off the call. I'll how go to, listen. How to? Yeah. How to listen to that? <laughs> sorry that we wrapped everything else. And also, I thanked you. And I'm going to thank you again in person. Thank you, Libby, so much for joining us. Did you have any final questions? We have another minute or so. If you if you had a final question. Oh, I guess you're going to ask what I just answered. So, okay, we will. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. So I'm just going to thank yeah, you yeah. for being our first ever, Leia. Get yeah, real, yeah. Uh, get real with Leia uh, on the Ladies Talk Show. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope this was educational for everybody. And please do me a favor: send me emails. There's a way to do that on the website, uh, www.ladiestalkshow.com, where you can do it anonymously. You just put in anonymous where your name goes. You know, it explains it there. So you can make comments. You can ask questions there that I will try to answer on the show. Um, but also, I'd love to hear back from people if you like the Get Real Show. If you like the, you know this whole format or whatever if it worked for you and if you want to come and be a guest on the and it wasn't it, i found it so funny though that especially in that the ending that um the way it played out that the just after that whole thing of where she's sort of grappling with the washing the dishes how she goes to her friend's house and exactly that scenario comes up where her friend's manicured said, fingers yeah, right. and, and her the husband says sure i'll do the dishes honey and i just like i was saying to myself like if her her friend's husband would have said are, are, you, are you crazy no your dishes your nails will dry and i'm not washing dishes she would have gone home and probably had a very different thought in her head about her Sarit, husband she'd be like brilliant. oh my god i'm not the only one it's a whole right. bunch of us like that and this is it's, right and I, who I knows that lady m might have said oh he's in public he's correct. if i asked him I privately in the also, kitchen he'd yes. say no way correct. but here he had to <laughs> look like the good husband the good husband and afterwards he was probably like i'm i'm he could have made her do who knows what else to make up for that right and, and he's resentful himself exactly. and said i, I you think know. that so much of also of, of what i'm hearing from her is all this stuff that we take from other people we see all these things of it's what we mess. think yeah life should be like and yeah. what we think i mean that adds to that spiral yeah feeling sorry for yeah. myself like he yeah did. now here's what you have to know Libby, is that god himself planted that husband and wife saying that to test you mm -hmm. who are you going to be in the matter yeah. who are I you going to be so <laughs> What did she say? She said, I failed. You didn't I fa fail. You did what every wife would do. Right, exactly. <laughs> we're but, all humans. We're not We're, we're not angels. Right, <laughs> but as she said, you passed for next week. Yeah. So the, it, which you really did because, but here's the thing. You didn't fail. Failing would be staying mad and angry, not turning to us and talking about it and wanting to work on it and wanting to grow in it. That is definitely not a failed yeah right right yeah, hello yeah 100%. it's like yeah 100 percent. so yes to you and um i you know maybe maybe uh in the future you can send me an email and say by the way i logistically did this i well you listen to my last uh, points but you know i logistically did this i i uh and i'm feeling much better about this or this has been additionally difficult can you answer a question so you maybe go to give her a homework Leia, oh, you have like a few more minutes left. Maybe give her a homework. Okay, she yeah, yeah, I'm, okay, <laughs> yeah, good. I'll also give it to everybody. Yes, yes. Mean the homework. But, you know, and by the way, the homework, um, I mean, it's related to what uh, my wrap up, which is that. Um, so the homework is so uh, giving someone homework to make marriage your pro top priority or making shalom bias your top priority. That's always our homework okay but so if you can just have that in the forefront of your mind but in terms of an actual physical thing to do in your homework this week is to actually sit down with your tasks 
task list, your 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 weekly things, not like oh I need to go you know uh, pick up the sh- my shoes at the cobbler or whatever. Uh, um, do people pick up their shoes at the yeah, cobbler? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably Should just buy them. a new pair. Or Amazon. <laughs> okay. So, but anyway, the the uh, right. Um, so, but. Um, not, things that you do every week, like I do the laundry, I do the, you know, dishes after lunch, you know, do some of the things that you feel most resentful about, just a few of them, three, four, five of them, write them down and then process them in your own mind, introspect, like, you know, is it, my husband works, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours, 80, as you said, hours a week sometimes, is it right for me to expect him to wake up in the morning? It, yes, no, I wish he did. You know what, if he did, if on Mondays when I have my longest day at work, if on Mondays he helped me once a week, I could do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no problem, you know. But the fact that he never does and every morning there's that tension, he should be helping, that's what's not working. And if you logistically solve that by... Is she there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you logistically solve that by working through in a journal or in a notebook or on your phone or whatever, make a little notes to yourself of making your life work better. You know what? I love ha- being the neighborhood house that everyone comes to, and I love having guests. We're doing it twice a month instead of every week. End of story. That's my shalom buys. That's what I'm doing for shalom buys. Go through your grocery list. Are there things you can buy in bulk? Are there, you know, try and work on your a plan to ease your burden that's the homework right and by the way what you just said about picking let's say one time um that actually works really well because i'm sort of in the same place as libby in terms of that my husband's the working and i work but also part-time so i kind of make my own hours and do my own thing but i have little kids so i understand where she's saying I'm kind of working 90 hours or right. more because with little kids, you're nonstop. Right. But still, at the same token, he's not waking up in the morning. I'm the one waking up, and I'm the one getting the kids ready and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And we just got to a point where when you had said that a while back in our classes, that let's say pick one day. So I did. I, I sort of spoke to my husband and said, can we pick Shabbos morning? You have to get it for shul anyways. Um, and you have to. it's one of those days where you have to get up to go to be in shul at a certain time and to make them it's like different than a a regular day where Mm -hmm. you can you have more flexibility so can we pick Shabbos as the day where I get to sleep in I don't have to make lunches I don't have to do all that I get to sleep Mm -hmm. in and you'll take the kids out and you'll you know do whatever and let me have my my time and it actually worked out really well like to think in my head okay so the whole week I'm doing it but I know that I have my day where I get to sleep in. I don't have to worry about it. It's all on him. Beautiful. Perfect. That's very, yeah, that's very, very that's very helpful. Very good. Would you think that would feel good to you? Um, I can think about it. (laughs) Okay, I have to think about it. Okay, that's fair. All right, very good. That's the end of our show. This is Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. Thank you very much for joining us again. uh, Like us and friend us. What are they, Nelson? Yeah, Um, (laughs) subscribe. uh, Please ask questions. We love, when I get an email in that says a private thing for Leah or I have a question or whatever, I love that. It's like my thrill. Like, oh, good. People are participating. and, and, And I know whoever, when you ask a question, it always is a, a hundred other people who have that question. So um, uh, anyway, I wanted to thank, uh, uh, it wasn't Libby, it was Libby. We said yes. Libby, Libby. We want to thank Libby, our guest, very much for being with us today. It made a great show, and uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next week.